$3,000, just a touchdown on the runway in your little airplane. And that doesn't include refueling, ram fees, or any of that. Exorbitant fees are hitting the GA community, and we're gonna talk about it in the hangar. Welcome to In The Hangar. I'm Christy Wong. And I'm Dan Milliken. In The Hangar is brought to you by our sponsors, so please check them out in the description below. Uh, for instance, Z-Vision, xzvision.com. They're the brightest landing and taxi lights out there, so please check them out. It helps us. Yeah, we're going to talk about our sponsors at the end. Yep. I really want to get in to these exorbitant GA yes, fees because so I'm I, I can't believe we finally got Eric from SoCal Flying Monkey to, to come on the show. Eric, it is so great to meet you yeah. in person. It's the first time. Thanks I am super excited yeah. to have yeah. you, yeah. Yeah, nice to be here, thank you. So, so Eric, I gotta ask right off the bat, before we get to the exorbitant fees, there's gotta be some really magic, <laughs> mystical story of why you named your channel SoCal Flying Monkey. Uh, sorry to disappoint you, Dan, but there isn't <laughs> such a great story. It's just kind of a silly name that I chose. I really like monkeys, and I'm from live in Southern California, so. Well, and there I it fly, is. So Mystery solved. SoCal flying monkey seems to make <laughs> okay. sense. So you know, you're in the entertainment business. You like us. We work, and you've got to do a better story than that. Just come up <laughs> with one. I, I have considered making like a. Hollywood style production of the origin story of yeah, SoCal Flying Monkey. Perfect. I thought that would be a really cool channel video, but I haven't like gotten around to it. He got that. in an airplane, there was a monkey. Yeah, like I got bitten by a monkey, thing. I got some yeah. superpowers between like a bird oh, and a monkey, so it was like yeah. a flying monkey. Yeah, well, see, I haven't not, done it yet. Not that I'd buy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great story. Cool story, yeah, dude. Yeah. All right, so now let's get to what's not a cool story. Um, Formula One came to Las Vegas and they just increased the fees so high, it was just unbelievable. What was that all about? Yeah, so I heard about this from a user on our uh, Flying Monkey Discord chat. We have a Discord for community of aviators. And he said, hey, I just got back from Vegas and I flew in for, it was at, he was actually flying in for the Sphere opening weekend mm -hmm. when they had that. They tried to charge him $500 just to keep his plane there. Uh, so I heard about it and I started to look into it. Formula One was coming up and I learned that they were gonna be charging $3,000 event fees, special event fees for any aircraft. $3,000, $3, any aircraft. <clears throat> yeah, so I called around all of the FBOs, um, which for North Las Vegas, Henderson, and um, Las Vegas International, which is called Harry Reid now, Atlantic and Signature. It will always there. be McCarran to me. <laughs> right. You know I'm from Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it'll yeah. always be McCarran. Um, and so I called all the FBOs there and they confirmed that it was gonna be a $3,000 special event fee and you needed prior permission to arrive. What about Boulder City? Um, Boulder City, they, after that time, then they actually started charging people as well because they got the overflow traffic, but That's I heard it wasn't as much. The hard numbers on the F1 for Las Vegas were um, $3,000 for the fee and they said that that was even gonna be for drop and goes. So not only if you're gonna be parking there, but even if you just wanna drop somebody off in your and keep going. In your Piper Cherokee, you've gotta pay $3,000. That's insanity. Yeah. And it was even worse with the Super Bowl there, Well, right? we'll get to that. Okay. But okay. Let's talk about Formula One because that's where like you got involved. Um, set the stage for some people might go, hey, we're a free country, we're, you know, free enterprise. If if the demand is supply and demand, if the demand's there. If people are willing to pay it. You know, blah, blah, blah. But there is one thing that those people don't understand is the government factor of of the airport. So, Right. Yeah, and that's kind of what, for, for me, it, it just kind of upset me hearing that it was going to be such high fees because Vegas is a place I like to go. Um, take my family there and I might not have wanted to go see Formula One, but just take a weekend there had plans with friends um, So I got kind of fired up about it and when I get fired up I just tend to make stuff so I started making some videos about it and getting really investigating it I feel that you know um, the airports are supposed to be public utilities and Everybody should have equal access to them and it's kind of not just my opinion It's actually you know airports that take federal grant money have certain grant assurances, and one of those is to charge fair and reasonable fees to all the aeronautical users and not discriminate against any group of aeronautical users. So, so that FAA rules say airports that take money from us have to be fair and reasonable. Right, yeah, it's okay. in various parts of the rules and the airport compliance manual for airports that accept grants. 
Now, I'm just a cinematographer from LA. I'm not like a, you know, a public policy expert or anything, but I tried to do as much research as I possibly could into this. And I have been in contact with a senator's office about these policies and with AOPA, so I've been working with them as well, just to try to understand the whole situation and try to do something about it because I don't think it's right. I, I don't think it's right that they're charging that much money. So I was trying to get to the, the bottom of why that is and what we could do about it. So what did they say about it? What was AOPA's reaction and the senator? Were they like, hey, that yeah, you're right, that's not good. Right, so AOPA, when I, I reached out to them and said, hey, you guys are probably aware of this. I'm sure you're aware of this, but this is what I found out. One of our users said this and Formula One's charging us. They said, yeah, we're, we're all over it. We're involved in it. We're supposed to have a call with them with Clark County uh, Department of Aviation, who runs uh, all three of those airports and owns the FBOs <clears throat> at North Vegas and Henderson. So they were gonna have a call with them anyway. And so they were on it from the beginning. So I started coordinating with them about the information and looking at the FAA data on the actual traffic going in there because the airports claim that, you know, Clark County Department of Aviation is claiming that they need to bring on a ton of resources to accommodate the number of aircraft. That's their justification for a $3,000 fee for a Cessna 172. Right. That is, that's, what they, that's what they claim. That's what they claim. Right. And so for all the special event fees, that's what they claim, to accommodate the traffic. So I went on FAA's OpsNet website, which is that you can get data for air, airport operations from all the airports. And, um, and I looked at the traffic for the Sphere opening weekend where they, char they were charging $500 for every aircraft during that one. And I found that like that weekend wasn't even in like the top 20 busiest weekends for any of those airports uh, for the whole year. So going back like a whole, the whole year. So it didn't seem like that was really what was going on, you know, charging this to because of the amount of aircraft. Yeah, that doesn't. Add, the math is not adding up. Okay, so now can we ask about the Super Bowl? Like, how did this affect coming no, into the Super no, Bowl? No, let's not yet. Let's still uh, save that because Dan. because we haven't resolved what happened when he made his video about Formula One. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so I made the video about Formula One, and um, I had heard that somebody higher up in the FAA had seen it and was then interested and was going to be on the call with AOPA and the Clark County Department of Aviation. So they had their phone call. Unfortunately, I wasn't on that I was phone call. Say, I would have loved to be on that phone call, but um, I was not invited to that phone call. And, um, and after that happened, then Clark County reduced the fee for uh, aircraft design group type one aircraft, which is wingspans, I think less than 40 feet or something like that. Uh, to seven hundred fifty dollars, so seven hundred fifty dollars. Type two is three thousand. Type three is three thousand. Also, high. still, in my opinion, I think unreasonably high because seven hundred and fifty dollars is more than the cost of operating a lot of the aircraft in a round trip to and from Las Vegas. So, the fee just to drop somebody off is going to be higher than the entire operating cost there and back. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. With you actually coming out with the numbers and showing that, like especially the spear, that it, it, the numbers aren't there to justify what Clark County is claiming. Have they, have they answered that? So for that, event, for that event, the numbers didn't justify that claim and uh, nobody has ever really addressed that. They have provided some accounting to, not directly to me, but I've obtained the accounting for the Formula One uh, for the expenses that they incurred to you know, manage the traffic and provide services, which does include things like catering and coolers for caterers and, and a, a bunch of stuff that Part 91 GA pilots really don't want or right, care right. about. Um, so, so they're providing an, an accounting of, of, of that and uh, there definitely was increased traffic for Formula One. Like the okay. numbers are there for Formula One, but if you look at the, the numbers, what happens is the air taxi traffic goes up in North Las Vegas airport for that week, that event period by like 250% increase in air taxi traffic. But GA traffic, which is non-air taxi, just general aviation, is down like 15% in North Las well, Vegas. Well, because they were charging right $3,000 for, and they finally did go down to 750, but there was a time they were charging 3,000. Right, and then at Henderson, it's up 400% for air taxis and down 25% for GA. Nobody's allowed to fly in the pattern, there's no, even civil local 
operations in the pattern. So what we can see is that the, those fees have made it so that like the air taxi companies can pass along those costs to their customers, but generally aviation part 91 owner operators, we get totally squeezed out of the airports because we, we, don't, we can't pass those costs on to anybody. And it doesn't make any sense to pay $750 to land at any airport in Las Vegas when you're flying an airplane that costs in fuel like $75 an hour. So is it $750 to land there now at any given time? Or is that just for special events? Right, it's just for special events whenever they decide they have a special event. Now, a place like Las Vegas is getting more and more sports teams. We know that what right. they're doing. They want to have a lot of special events. They have the sphere. So who knows what's going to be considered a special event. And I think you know, that's why I wanted to start addressing it is we have to stop it at some point, and like now is a good time because it's starting. Yeah, because it'll come to a point where GA will be killed entirely in Vegas. And let me ask you this, is it possible, well, I mean, this is kind of like a stupid loaded question, but the FBOs and Clark County Aviation want to kill GA because it's just a lot easier to deal with the big jets coming in and more profitable I, and all I that. I can't speak for a anybody's you know, motive. motive that I don't have firsthand knowledge of. Looking at, looking at the information, that's what's happening. So if they continue on this course of action with charging these fees, then you can only infer that this is the motive. I, I'm, I'm sure that managing that amount, volume of aircraft at these airports isn't an easy job. I don't think for a second that that's an easy job, but I think there's probably a better way and a more reasonable fee structure that actually conforms to the, the FAA rules right. and would be a legal way about going about it versus what's going on now, which seems more arbitrary and seems really detrimental to GA. Um, where does all this extra money go? So like if they're not getting the traffic that justifies these huge fees, where does all that money go that they get? That's, that's a great question. And I, I did look at some financial documents from you know previous years uh, for Clark County Department of Aviation and the county in general. And the aviation departments always run a surplus every year. So they've always had a surplus. Technically, from my understanding, they're only allowed to spend aviation revenue on airport expenses. So they can't, for instance, take in a million dollars in aviation revenue and go spend it on some other county need. Uh, so theoretically, it should be getting back in, you know, put back into the airports. But I, that's not always the case. I've heard of a lot of other cases of this sort of thing where the, you know, there's been investigations where they haven't you know, put money in, not Clark County specifically, but other, other airports haven't put the money back into the airport, so. They're gonna have gold-plated taxiways. I know, they're gonna have gold-plated chalks. Well, here. Chrissy, you know what time it is now? Oh, I get to ask about the Super Bowl. How did this impact <laughs> The Super Bowl. Right. So, yeah. So for the Super Bowl, the fees are were the same, um, $750. I think they dropped the Type 2 down to 2000 Okay. And then the Type 3 aircraft were still $3,000. Um, so, yeah, they just keep on going with, with the same plan. And hopefully, you know, we can, we can affect some kind of change by holding them accountable and having the FAA come and say, hey, you want the federal grant money. You have to not discriminate against different user groups and charge fair and reasonable fees. Okay, so what can pilots, other GA pilots and whatnot, what can we do to help that process? Yeah, and I think people should know um, that this isn't necessarily just a Las Vegas thing. There's FBOs across the country, which are it's a, a little bit different of a situation where there's private companies coming in. You guys all know like the big chain FBOs. Right. They're coming in and they monopolize the parking areas yeah. of the airport. You can't fly into like, a Class D airport, like I think Palm Springs is Class D, and there's no GA transient parking. You have to use the FBO, right? There's a lot of airports like that where we we're, we're have to use the FBO services, even if we don't want to. And those FBOs are charging really high fees. Like in Key West, they have a, a boat race or whatever. They charge $250 to for you know to drop off a passenger. There's there's things happening like that all across the country, and I think. I'm sensing the privatization of the public infrastructure happening, so I want to do something about it. And if other people want to do something about it, I've put together a list of resources at uh, my website, SoCalFlyingMonkey.com, that you can go to and you know call your Congress people. All the contact info is going to be there, as well as like the latest information 
about what's happening in Washington with the different acts that are trying to protect general aviation. I mean, we're seeing it at some of our local airports here. Yeah, and you know what's scary for me is, is now that we've traveled abroad a little bit and um, looked at GA in Europe and UK and different places and hearing the stories from our viewers from Australia and, and other places, we have it really good here for GA. And I think that if we don't fight this, we won't have it good for long. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Dan. I think, you know, I didn't realize this before getting into aviation, but aviation is a really uniquely American freedom that once you're in it, you kind of see how good we have it here and how special it is. So from my perspective, like I want to do everything I can to protect that freedom. I think it's, it's, it's an amazing freedom that we have for everybody to be able to fly an aircraft. I sold my previous Cherokee to a, a group of five friends who are all just, you know, like very middle class people coming together, buying an airplane and flying it. I think that's amazing. And I want that to continue. So um, it is a special thing we have. And I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, we can do something to help protect it and just keep it accessible. Yeah. Well, Eric, um, I want to thank you for chasing this because it took a lot of work and a lot of time. Um, you know, when you went after it in Formula One and then the follow-up for the Super Bowl. Um, other than, you know, uh, going to your website, w any other takeaways for the GA audience? I mean, I think other than, you know, just realizing, like, the general aviation community is what we make it, and if everybody can be involved in making it what they want, and you can decide what you want it to be. If we want airports to be public utilities that we all get to access, we, we can make it that way. So... That, to me, that's the takeaway. I think calling your Congress people, like I said, I have that list, but just yeah. generally calling your Congress people and asking them to support fair and reasonable fees at uh, FBOs. Recently, they decided that they're going to need to institute a study about transparency and GA fees. And it's like, we don't So we don't in 10 years from now, we'll know something. Yeah, so they're yeah. just sort of like dragging this out and delaying it. But we, we need, a, you know, the FAA to hold these people to account, these airports to account. Um, and we need Congress to like enact the legislation to well, protect the airports even more and like put it more into the letter of the law. Even more, yeah, because we have it fair and reasonable, which I guess can be defined a bunch of different mm -hmm. ways. And and you're to to clarify, you're not advocating that uh, GA should not be charged anything. No, I, I happily pay reasonable fees. You yeah, know, because they have the to, the FBOs and... People have to make a living, They of have course. to make a living, yeah. they have to pay their insurance, they have to do, yeah. to pay their labor, everything else, we get that. Yeah, but and also the airport, the airports are generally funded not from, you know, every single person's tax dollars, but the, from user fees, and airports are self-sustaining, mm -hmm. aside from the grant money that is used for airport infrastructure improvements, you know, they're self-sustaining, so hangar rents and fuel sales and, yeah, landing fees and FBO fees, sure, we should be paying some for that to keep things going, keep people employed. Absolutely. I don't want, I don't think anybody should be expecting anything for free, but I also think we shouldn't let private corporations come in there and just usurp everything out of the airports and take everything. Because it will kill GA. It will kill GA. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. All right. What do you think would be a fair and reasonable fee for these FBOs? Yeah, I kind of relate this to, um, you know, if you're driving on a, a public road and then things get really busy or there's an event, a sporting event in town, I mean, we don't get charged uh, a, a big fee just to drive on that public road or go park at public street parking. The meter rates don't go up when things get busy. And that's, that's sort of what I feel is happening in the Vegas example. And I think, you know, something more fair might, might be, there's a couple scenarios. One might be to charge a fee based on the percentage of like how much the hourly operating cost is of the of the aircraft. So um, somebody who's operating an aircraft that's like really expensive to operate, they can afford a bigger fee. So Taylor Swift. Might be, yeah, it might be like, you know, a big jet comes in, but a Cherokee that costs, you know, $75, $100 an hour to operate um, would not be charged $750 or $3,000. Um, and the other thing to consider would be to be looking at the air taxi operator is a little bit differently because they're they can pass those costs on to their uh, their customers. So any like Part 135 operators, 
maybe have them be in a separate category and have a few different categories for the fees, but you know, charging uh, uh, Piper Cherokee the same rate as you're going to charge like a you know a pri a private act. jet <laughs> doesn't really seem to make sense to me. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing this information and for doing the groundwork. Yeah, it's thanks really, for really me. important. We I, really appreciate I it. I like a good underdog fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you guys for watching. And, and uh, we'll put a link um, down in our description below to Eric's web page. Um, go there, look for the link that says do something and, and, um, and do something. So thank you to our sponsors. Uh, we mentioned uh, some at the beginning, but also we've got Flying Eyes. Go to flyingeyesoptics.com. Use our discount code taking off. All caps, one word for 10% off. Colton Mortgage, coltontakingoff.com. Z Vision, the brightest taxi landing lights out there. 67designs, 67d.com for your mounts, for your cameras, your phones, your tablets in the airplane or in your car. And also... Um, did I say Marshall Protective Services? You are now. <laughs> Marshall Protective Services, MPS Protects. And you talked about Jerry, right? I, if I didn't, Clemens Insurance on that. <laughs> so. And of course, you guys, uh, thank you as always for supporting the channel. Please like, oh my gosh. Like, uh, like share. Like, well, she doesn't share, want you to subscribe yeah, because see, I don't we're on the cusp of 100,000 subscribers. I don't want you to subscribe. And that will make her jump out if of an airplane. If you subscribe, then I have to jump out of an airplane when we hit 100,000. So <laughs> and, and, please and, and, like, unsubscribe, share our videos. We'll see you all next time. In the hangar. And Chewie says, woof. <laughs>